There were dinosaurs around, and these dinosaurs were like huge lizards as big as buildings, their teeth sharp and poisonous. Men and women were hiding from these beasts in a jungle. There were many places that people could go to hide from the giant lizards. As I came, I saw the giant lizards. They had laid a dozen of eggs. These eggs were the size of a very tall human. The eggs began to crack and out came a miniature version of the giant lizards. I saw the humans hiding and quickly got them to follow me so I could take them to safety. The dinosaurs are demonic beasts representing the physical form of fallen angels, demons. The eggs and what comes out of the eggs is a serpent seed, Satan's sons. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man, which sowed good seed in the fields. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, because of the wheat into my barn. Matthew thirteen twenty four to 30 He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. Let me repeat that part. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. And them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to ear, let him hear. Matthew thirteen thirty seven to 43. We see clearly here in scripture, Satan has sons. This isn't a metaphor. You remember the Nephilim, the giants, whom the fallen angels infiltrated with human DNA and mixed it. The seed of the serpent in exactly the same way. Didn't Messiah say, as in the days of Noah? Just as giants were around in Noah's day, there will be giants around during tribulation and the serpent seed. For just as in the parable with the wheat and tares, the tares look exactly like the wheat, but are unable to see which is which until the time of the reaping. Satan has secret agents, spies, moles, right in the congregation, ministers, apostles, servants, sons among us. They are cleverly disguised that without the gift of discernment, one cannot tell the difference between a spy and a true believer. They are so well disguised that they do not know who they are. They look converted, talk converted, and seem righteous. Oftentimes they transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. They are so good at deceiving, they say the right things, they serve. They preach just like the good seed. But they are evil. These evil agents, as good as they look, work to destroy the good seed. If Satan fails to get us immediately, he has his spies or agents to dissuade us from the right way, while we are in the congregation, in our neighbourhood, with our brothers and sisters. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, that they might be made manifest, that they were not all of us. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. 1 John 2, 19-20 Unction, meaning action of anointing some with oil as a symbol of investing a person with honour, 
or rank. The Lord tells the angels to let the agents, spies, sons, grow together with believers until the harvest. Then the spies shall be kept for judgment. Fear not, for the Lord gave us something to go by, to help us know before you gain the gift of discernment. Beware false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by the fruits you will know them. Matthew seven, fifteen to 20 They will come to you with an attitude of niceness, pretending to be for God. But before you know it, they begin to teach you how to twist God's word and to come against even attacking your own brethren with scripture. These wolves have cold hearts. Evilness is their fruits. Their main goal is to take you away from God and living a worldly lifestyle. They are manipulative, deceitful, unkind, full of anger. Peace does not live in their hearts. They cannot love, for they dwell not in love. They have no patience or goodness. They lie to get what they want. They manipulate to feed their greediness and worldly desires. They feed their sheep with poisonous lies, all to destroy the sheep and drag them down with them. Think of what Yah hates. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that are swift and running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. Proverbs six seventeen to 19 Discord is when someone causes people to fight against each other. Also in 2 Corinthians twelve twenty, the word speaks against those who cause discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfishness, slander, gossip, arrogance and disorder. Slander is when someone is saying something untrue about someone. And gossip is conversation about people involving details which are not true. All these qualities I've mentioned here are all evil fruits and of the devil. Now next time you decide to watch a preacher or associate with someone, check their fruits. If they possess any of these evil fruits, run and don't turn back, not even for your coat. And she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. Genesis thirty-nine twelve. This example here is how we need to immediately get away from sin, move away from it and place yourself with people who possess the good fruits, who will encourage us to go deeper with God, accepting our role in the kingdom. Check out these fruits, people of God. The evil fruits. Wealthy fruits. Now let's take a look at the good fruits. Love, joy, peace, kindness, patience, goodness, self-control, faithfulness, gentleness. May I remind you, gentleness is not about being timid. It's about being sensitive to people's situations and encouraging them to get through it. Through the strength of Yah. We are bold lions and lionesses. Sound your roar, people of God. Be strong and be courageous.
You were fearfully and wonderfully made. Remember, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is the God that is within you than all those attacks that are within the world. 